um, challenge of uh, stopping Lamar Jackson? It's a tremendous challenge. It's um, just one of the most unique offenses, and obviously Lamar is one of the most unique players in this league. So um, it is an absolute uh, – it's a headache, you know, but – um, I really believe our guys are up for it, and I'm excited about the challenge, um, although it is, a, it is a tremendous one. Did you face him in Atlanta? We did, yeah, in 2018, his, uh, what would have been his rookie year. One of his first, I think, full-time starts for him, and uh, you can't simulate him. You know, you watch him on tape and you watch him on, on TV, and, and obviously you come away impressed, but until you feel that game day speed, it's, uh, um, it's, it's different, you know, it really is. But... Uh, is it tough? Absolutely. Um, are we excited about it? Absolutely. How, how has them not playing any of their starters in the preseason impacted your preparation? Uh, not not a whole lot. You know, I think the, the, the biggest obstacle always week one, and it's not necessarily with Baltimore, is just the combinations of personnel, how they're going to utilize their new personnel. You know, obviously this team has a new tight end. It's got a couple new skill players. So, uh, you know, it would have been nice to, to see how they're going to utilize those new guys, but um, but we're ready. We're ready for any combination that come out. Of. You guys defensively, I mean, you, you preach attack, 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 and, yep. and, and aggressiveness, but when you play a quarterback like Lamar, who, you know, if you close in, he can obviously run right around you. Right. You have to stress discipline, maybe, and, and tip the scales more there than the aggressive. Absolutely. Yeah, this is, uh, it goes back to, like, in college when you played the, the triple options and the veers and all that. You uh, you got to play rules football a little bit, you know, and, and uh, so we're preaching it all week long. Our guys, I think they got a, they got a strong understanding of what we're asking them to do, and uh, they're excited about the plan. I'm excited about the plan, but you're absolutely right. Like, this is rules ball. Um, a lot of times we, you know, we preach the check whoop ass and, and go get after people and put things on our terms. And we'll still, you know, we'll still have that same mindset, but just with a little bit more discipline, just like you said. How excited are you to get Carl Lawson back on the field that three year off? Yeah, I mean, he is absolutely impossible to replicate. You know, um, he brings not only pass rush and he brings skill, but he also brings this toughness and this strain and this effort and this mindset. Um, that absolutely rough, rubs off on other people. So, uh, you know, we missed him last year. We're excited to have him back. We really are. And I know he's excited, too. You said by week one he probably would be back to, you know, what he was last year or close to it. Right. Have you seen that? I have, yeah. Like, just keeps knocking the rust off every day. Had a really cool conversation with him today where, you know, and I think you learn this as you, as you play longer, and he's learning it now. And I think I learned it when I played was, you really want to find that sweet spot where you're ready for training camp, but you're peaking when the season starts. Um, whereas in past lives for him and for all, I think, young players, especially ones that are as conscientious as him, um, <clears throat> they come to camp fully ready to roll um, at the top of their game. And um, that's good, you know, but sometimes, especially the older you get with your body, the more you can kind of descend as the year goes on when you do that. So he's made a concerted effort to, to try to peak now, and he's feeling that. So, um, yeah, we're all excited. Mark Andrews, just kind of the challenges that you faced with him and trying to slow him down. Yeah, he's a, he's a very, very, very good tight end. Um, he's, he's another guy until you play him, you don't really get it, you know, because – on tape, you see a guy with a lot of completions and targets and um, a guy with, with great hands, route, route running, the whole thing. Um, but when he's, when he's in person and you're seeing him, he's, he's just a little different. His ability to separate and get open. And then obviously the relationship between him and Lamar is, is, is one where that is the security blanket. You know, when it's um, those got to have it moments, you know, that's, that's a guy that he loves to go to. So for us, um, we will have to have an answer for that. You have, you have so many numbers at defensive end, six on the roster. How does right. a guy like Jermaine Johnson factor in? Well, you know, I've, I've spoken about this in the past, and, and obviously, you know, people like to uh, react to it in the ways that they do. <laughs> but we rotate a lot of guys in, you know, and yeah, we have six defensive ends. At the same time, you have a guy in JFM that he's going to spend. Um, a good bit of time reduced inside as a three technique, two technique, one technique shades, you know, as a defensive tackle. So on paper, it looks like six, you know, it'll probably be more in the five range. This is a game where 
um, we have to be all hands on deck, especially at that position, because these ends are going to have to obviously be edge setters, but they're going to have to chase after this quarterback all day long. And Jermaine's obviously a guy that's that built for this, you know, from the standpoint he has length, he has speed. Um, and on top of it all, he's a guy fresh from college who's who's very familiar and accustomed to this type of offense, you know, which obviously is a little bit more prevalent in the, in the college game. What do you guys have to do to improve the rush defense from last year? I believe you were 32nd in rushing touchdowns allowed, which is a stat you obviously don't like. So right. you did a lot of work this offseason adding players schematically. What needs to improve from last year in terms of run defense? Yeah, I, I, I think the, you know, as we get more familiar with this front, we're going to get better just naturally. Um, I think the addition of, of some of the guys that we've gotten will help that. Um, a big part of it, when you really go back and watch it, um, sometimes those, those explosives can get you out of whack from a statistical standpoint. And uh, so in my opinion, that's probably the biggest area of emphasis to, to reduce the explosives. And, um, you know, whether it's improved tackling, tracking, players, skill, all of that will um, hopefully manifest itself into to better run defense. But um, you're right, like it has to be better. You know, in this league, you've got to create the second and longs. You've got to create those third down ops on second down, you know, where you can absolutely let this pass rush just go and jump out their shoes and, and affect quarterbacks. So uh, um, affecting or, or playing the run um, at, a, at a higher level is, is necessary to play the defense that we want to play. How critical is it for you guys to keep them on a third short, Jeff? Because that seems like Lamar is just like he converts every one. I know it's it's uh, it's interesting when you go back and look at it. You know, typically when you watch a team and you study short yardage, it's three, four, you know, short yardage snaps a game. Like it feels like these guys have 10, 11, 12, 13, third and ones, third and twos, fourth and ones a game. So they live in that third and short window because they they're so efficient on first, second down. So um, to keep them out of sure yards, we just we've got to win first down. We do. We got to win first down. We got goes back to the run defense has to be exceptional this game. And uh, if you do that, um, you give yourself an opportunity to to play against a little bit more normal football on second down. And when you do that, hopefully you can get them into the third and longer windows where um, it gives us the ability to be a little bit more creative. What kind of summer uh, training camp and? Uh, preseason, did Jermaine Johnson have? I mean, it, I'm not, you know, a lot better than I do. It, it seemed quiet, but I'll let you, the expert, talk about it. Yeah, he, uh, he's a guy that I think he's so conscientious and he's got such a do right mentality mm -hmm. that um, when you got a guy like that, I think sometimes they don't jump off the tape initially just because they're trying to get all the tiny little fundamentals correct and the principles correct and all the techniques right and the, the alignment assignment perfect. You know, so um, I don't know if he's fully just let it rip yet and play and let his, his talent shine. But um, oh, we've seen enough glimpses. And the, the, the thing that I'm most impressed with him is the mindset. Like when he came in, um, He's a young player, and young players they have to they have to learn this league, and they have to learn how there's a there's a process, you know, to to be successful individually and collectively. So he's uh, he's learning that process. I've been very impressed with his maturity and his ability to to start to find his own process as a young player, you know, because young players it takes time, you know, and and uh, I think he's accelerated that process because of the men around him. He's got some really good models, you know, starting with Carl, and and the list goes on and on, but. Um, yeah, we're very excited about Jermaine. We are. With all the pieces you have, Jeff, on defense, how, how important is CJ's role in the middle term to just kind of quarterback in the defense? Yeah, it's it, the, the Mike linebacker and especially a guy like CJ, which we, we lean on so hard to run our defense and make all the checks and, and, and adjust and, and communicate and get everybody lined up. Um, he is absolutely critical. He's a guy that elevates everyone around him. Um, He's the guy. Because of him, we got a chance to be to be a good defense. You know, and uh, he is he's got a lot of the the glue that holds us together. So, you know, we go a little bit as he goes. And and uh, if there's a guy I want to lean on, that's the guy I want to lean on. Does, hey, Carl, more, does Carl Lawson remind you or of anybody you've seen over the years? Oh, that's a good question. I was just talking to Aaron Whitecotton about that yesterday. He is very much a unicorn in a lot of ways. You know, because. 
<clears throat> I know I've spoken about this before in the past, but it's a guy that when you look on paper, you look for, when pass rushers, you look for length, you look for uh, speed, you look for, you know, great bend and, and that. And he might not necessarily check those boxes on paper, but then all of a sudden you watch the tape and you see this guy that just wins consistently and, uh, and affects quarterbacks and, and plays at such a high clip that, uh, yeah, he's, he's a hard one for me because he doesn't, like I said, he doesn't check those boxes, but he checks all the boxes as far as affecting quarterback sacks, you know, playing the run well, all those things. So um, he's a unicorn. He is.